Hallelujah. What a beautiful day. A beautiful day in the house of the Lord. Thank you for being part of this family. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been a very difficult week. Um, uh, these past two weeks have been really very difficult for many people uh, because of what is happening in our city. A, a large population of the city is sick. Uh, many people have developed uh, uh, symptoms that look like COVID. Many people have confirmed that they are uh, positive. And many people also just have some strange flu symptoms and there is headache and pain and exhaustion and flu and runny nose and all kinds of things and fever. And this is the time we need healing, healing for our city. So even before we go into the message for today, I want us to spend some time to just pray. And just pray and believe God and believe God for, for healing and believe God for healing. Whatever you are, God can heal you. Whether you're at home um, or you're in the hostel, you know, or you're alone or you're with a family. But one thing is this, God can reach you where you are and God can heal you. Hallelujah. The Bible said Jesus is a healer. The Bible said he went about doing good and healing all. There is no sickness Jesus cannot heal. There is no sickness. He is the balm in Gilead that can bring suiting, that can bring healing. That's who Jesus is. And the Bible called him the son of righteousness, that he will arise with healing over his wings. And that's my prayer for you today. So what we're going to do today right now in the next few minutes is to pray and storm heaven with our prayer and believe in God for healing healing of the land hallelujah let us begin to pray right now just begin to speak healing over your life wherever you are just begin to pray over yourself every sickness any kind of symptom of flu-like symptom headache body pain nausea fever runny nose um, a coughing whatever it is Oh, with the intestine, whatever that is happening in your body, I speak healing over you right now in the name of Jesus. And I command the healing power of God to come upon you by the authority in the name of Jesus. May every sickness give way. The Bible spoke about Jesus and he visited um, Peter. And in the house of Peter, the Bible said the mother-in-law of Peter was sick. And when Jesus came, Jesus rebuked that fever and she got up and served them she was healed instantly and right now by the authority in the name of jesus i rebook that fever i rebook that cough i rebook the runny nose i rebook the headache that muscle and joint pains i rebook i rebook that uh, covid whatever it is i rebook that flu in the name of jesus and i speak healing over you in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God of heaven, let your healing power rest upon your people. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we pray for the healing of this city. Bring healing to our city. In the name of Jesus, we speak to every corner of this city. Lord, we purify the air, the water, the environment, the surfaces. And Lord, we pray, let health return to the city. Let this sickness be gone. And let health return to the city in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for you are our healer. We give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, one thing we're going to be doing uh, this Sunday and the next Sunday for a couple of weeks, we'll be doing immediately after uh, online service, if we're still online. Hallelujah. We're going to meet on Zoom. We'll be sending the Zoom details. Hallelujah. It's our normal church event Zoom details. It will be on the screen. It will be on the screen. Uh, just write it down. The same Zoom details we'll be using for fire conferences and for uh, night video. The same Zoom details. We're going to use that. So immediately after church, we're going to meet on Zoom to just see how you're doing. Uh, look at, see your faces. Um, pray for each other. Encourage uh, one another uh, and that's what we'll be, doing. we'll be doing i don't want you to miss it so immediately after service switch over to the zoom and, and meet with other brothers and sisters for encouragement for edification for for prayers 
and the God who has called us will continue to sustain you and he will continue to do amazing things in our lives. I want to tell you one thing, you will come out stronger. Hallelujah. This will pass. There will be a testimony. We shall all gather together to celebrate that God has answered our prayer. God has healed our land and God has brought transformation in our city. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Don't miss it. Middle after service, don't be in a hurry to go. Switch over to the Zoom and join us for a time of connection. A time of connection, a time of connection, a time of prayer. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Go ahead and open your Bible with me uh, to the book of Job as we look into the scripture. The book of Job, we're going to look at Job chapter 33 verses 14 to 16, just a few verses, and we're going to try to dig in deep into this by the grace of God. <clears throat> and the Bible said this, For God may speak in one way or in another. That's a God speak. God speak in many ways. Yet man does not perceive it. Man does not perceive it. So God is always speaking, but a lot of times we don't hear him because we're so busy. We've not really learned to hear him. And what happened? The Bible said then, in the dream, in the vision of the night, what happened? When deep sleep fall upon men, God does something. Why slumber in the bed? Then God will do what? He opens the ears of men and seal the instruction. And seal the instruction. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Lord, thank you for the entrance of your word. Give it life and understand it to the simple. Lord, we're here to hear from you. We're here to receive from you. And God of heaven, we pray, may you speak to us as only you can. We yield ourselves completely unto you. And Jesus, we pray, may you have your way in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, welcome, welcome to AOM. This is Anointing Overflow Ministry. This way, the anointing overflows. Our vision is very simple. To do what? To raise up anointed disciple makers who are empowered to do what to change their word for christ and i know god is just doing amazing things through the life of his people and this year has been an extraordinary year for us it's our year of supernatural increase and god spoke to uh, isaac in genesis and told him to stay in the land when there was famine in genesis 26 verse 12 the Bible gave us a report of what happened and scripture said isaac sowed in that land Remember, it's not in any land, in that land, the land where God told him to stay and to plant. He sowed in that land and he reaped in the same year a hundredfold. The Lord bless him. I pray may God bless you. May God cause you to increase on every side. May God enlarge your influence and may God continue to, to surprise you. May God guide you that the decision you make could not just be driven by emotion, that they are driven by God, that they are led by God. Hallelujah. You know, we are believers. We are led by the Spirit of God. Amen. And I pray that that will be your story. That will be your story. And this series we're doing, you know, we're bringing it to conclusion today. Amen. What an amazing series. We're bringing it to conclusion. It's a series titled Supernatural Lifestyle. Supernatural Lifestyle. And in this series, we looked at how can you live a supernatural life? The supernatural has to become more like a lifestyle, something that is regular, something that is ongoing. Amen? And as a believer, it's crucial for us to know that you have the Holy Spirit in you. He's God. He is a supernatural being. And He can do supernatural things in you and through you as we yield ourselves to Him. Hallelujah. And when we started the stories, we started looking at the critical part. We said the first thing we must understand is to learn to renew our mind. We establish one thing. You know, the mind is the greatest limitation. The mind is the greatest limitation for the supernatural lifestyle. And when we know too much, a lot of times we limit what is possible by our experience. The children don't limit things because they don't have so much experience. They just believe what they hear. And we must learn to renew our mind. Don't allow our circumstances to create a boundary for us. Rather, let what God says in his word defines what we believe. 
And secondly, we establish, you know, how can you position yourself for supernatural encounter? So a supernatural lifestyle experiences encounter after encounter. So how do you position yourself so that you can experience this supernatural encounter on a regular basis? Uh, and that was a very powerful message. We learned a lot there. And tally, we looked at how God has created us and has given us mandates to do what? To rule and to win. He has given us authority, authority to win, authority to rule. And when you understand that, you will not be afraid, you know, of any attack of the enemy because you have already won any battle. In Jesus, you are more than victorious. That's who you are. Amen. And you will not be afraid to engage in the supernatural because, you know, you are a winner. You have authority to win. Not only you do that, you have authority to rule and to set the pace of things. And fourthly, we looked at how do you tune in, you know, in this supernatural, how do you tune in and hear God? See, if you're going to live a supernatural lifestyle, you must learn to hear God. You must learn to understand what he's saying. You must be led by him. And how do you tune in? In the midst of all the noise, in the midst of all the commotion, how do you quiet your spirit and tune in and hear God? We looked at that and we learned a lot on how to tune in and how to hear God on a regular basis through vision, through visions. Today, we're bringing this to conclusion by looking at a sermon, you know, on how do you interpret dreams and vision? You, we see dreams. Dreams is very common. Almost everyone dreams. You know, some people dream almost every night. Hallelujah. And we have visions and we've learned how to see visions, but you must learn how to interpret them correctly. And that's what we'll be looking at in this uh, particular sermon. How do you, you know, interpret uh, visions and dreams correctly? And our message this morning is titled Interpreting Visions and Dreams. Interpreting Visions and Dreams. So God is always speaking to us in visions, in dreams. But if we don't pay attention, we miss what he's saying. Or we misinterpret what he's saying. So it's crucial for us to do what? For us to understand what God is saying and to hear him clearly. Job said this in Job 33 where we read, Job 33, 14 to 16, the Bible says, For God may speak in one way or in another. God is always speaking. He may speak in one way or another. God is always trying to communicate with us. Because a loving Father is one who cares about us. He said, Call upon me and I will show you. He's expecting to show us. But we must approach him. And as he's speaking to us, a lot of times we ignore it. We brush it at high. Sometimes there's a, a soft voice. You know, God drops the name of a person in your heart or brings a face of somebody you know. Or God will give you an open vision. Or God will give you a word, you know, a scripture. And a lot of times we brush it out. We don't take it very serious. And, and God keeps speaking to us and through circumstances. You know, we looked at all those things, different ways God can speak. But God can speak in one way or another. Yet, man does not perceive it. What a tragedy. Yet, we don't perceive it. We don't receive it. We don't hear it. We don't. But glory be to God, through this service, we've learned how to hear God. We've learned how to tune in, how to connect, and be able to receive what God has for us. But what does God not do? But we say, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep fall upon men, when slumbering on their bed, something beautiful happened. Then God, he opens the ears of what? Of men and seal the instruction. God will open your mind and give you a dream. And we're going to look at how do we interpret this dream? A lot of people are very confused. Uh, they don't know what to do when they dream. They are so afraid of dreams. You know, but God is speaking to us, and we're going to look at that by the grace of God to try to unpack it uh, and learn. How do we interpret dreams or visions? When you see open vision, when you see visions, how do you interpret them? Um, these are mere guidelines to help us. Amen? But the ultimate interpretation lies with the Holy Spirit. 
who lives in you, who is the giver of the vision and of the dream. You must always go to him and ask him for help, for inter interpretation of what he's telling us. What are the basics of interpreting visions and dreams? I want you to take note that these things are really very important. Take note, take note, take note. You're going to need them later in your life. First and foremost, start with the word of God. <laughs> Sounds simple. Start with the word of God. Every interpretation must be anchored on the word of God. Okay, you know, there are many references in scripture. So you need to read the word. You need to be a person of the word. So that whenever you're interpreting something, God can start from the word to begin to give you insight on what he's trying to communicate. You say, in scripture, one of the things you see in scripture is, you know, a sword sometimes can represent the word of God. Hallelujah. The Bible call it the sword of the word of the spirit, which is the word of God. So sometimes you see a vision of a sword, it could represent the word of God, just to give you an idea of what is possible. So it's important for you to be a student of the word. Say with me, I will study the word. Study the word. Study the word. The more you study, the more accurate you become in interpreting visions and dreams. Hallelujah. Secondly, whenever God speaks, you know, God will speak to you in the language and in the context you will understand. He will speak to you in the language and in the context you will understand. Uh, God could use common phrases that you know, or idioms, or metaphors, or objects that are familiar to you, or environment that you know. Animals, you know, places, colors, numbers. God will use something that is familiar to you, something that you can relate with, something that makes sense in your context. That's one thing that God does. See, God doesn't speak to us to confuse us. No, no, no. God speaks to communicate something and he will speak in a way that you'll understand. God will not start speaking to you and start speaking in Greek. No, he will use a language you understand. And God will use a setting you will understand. Sometimes you have dreams about you know, um, your old neighborhood. He will use familiar phrases you understand. God will use things that you can relate to or use idioms in your languages or proverbs, you know, or sentences, you know, just to help you get understanding of what he's saying. The third thing that we must, we must learn, okay, is this. Reduce the dream to the simplest form. Reduce the dream to the simplest form. What is the overall picture? What is the overall message? Don't go so much into the details, especially as you're beginning to learn. Don't go into so much details on the specifics, you know, and all of that. At least reduce it to the simplest form. What is the overall message that is being communicated? You know, the overall message, you know, it could be, you know, it's time for you to wake up and pray. And that could be the message that is being communicated. Uh, the overall message, it could be, you need to call your father. That is the overall message. You know, narrow it down to the basic, the simplest form that will help you. Fourthly, know this. The meaning of a dream, of a vision, is not always the same every time. You can see something now in another revelation, in another dream, it could mean something different. Let me give you an example. You see a lot of this in scripture. So a seed can mean faith. A seed can mean faith, okay? Obviously, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, all right? Um, but that seed can also mean the Word of God. A seed can mean the Word of God. A seed can also mean, and be speaking about the kingdom of God. There are references to scripture on all this. A seed can speak about future harvest. Future harvest. You know, it's through a seed that there will be harvest, okay? Okay. Um, and so there are many meanings to the same element. So it's important for you to allow the Spirit of God to let you know what is the meaning at this time. What is the meaning at this time? And fifthly, you know, sometimes multiple dreams are just aspects of the same event. They, they are the same story played from different angles, you know, shown from different directions. And, and, and that's how uh, dreams work. Uh, at times, uh, you see the, the dream of Pharaoh, 
you know, and he he dreamt about the the big fat cow and the skinny cow, about the you know the the grain, you know, that was full, you know, with 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 corn, and then the one that was nothing and all of that. But they're speaking about the same thing, okay? Um, so understand one thing: when there is repetition of dream, one similar thing is being communicated. Or you look at the dream of Joseph; he dreamt of where his stack was standing, the stack of his brothers fell down and worship him. Then he had another one of his star and the stars of his, you know, siblings were bind before him, including, you know, the, the, the moon and the sun. I'm speaking about the parents, okay? Uh, but he's speaking about the same thing. God is letting him know a time is coming. You're going to be a leader and they will bow before you. And that is the, the simplest definition of what God is telling you. You're going to be a leader. You're going to be a leader. You're going to be a leader. Even though you are, you know, second to the youngest, you're going to be a leader. And when you become a leader, they will bow before you. So we're going to go deep a little bit into some of this. We're going to go deep a little bit into some of this. The first one we're going to look at is we need to learn to interpret colors, colors in visions and in dreams. Interpret colors. Colors have meanings. Colors have meanings. So when you have a dream, the prominent color, there is something is trying to say. There is something that is being communicated by that prominent color. Uh, there are other colors there, but there is a color that, that stood out. You know, there was covering almost everything. Um, it, there was a color that your eyes was drawn to. It may not be the biggest color, but your eye was drawn to it. There is something important about that color for you to know. And there are so many color references in scripture. There are so many color references in scriptures. One of the colors um, uh, people people uh, connect with is the color of purple. Uh, purple speaks about royalty, about kingship. That's what that's what purple speaks about. So when you see that color, uh, a lot of times it will mean that, unless the Holy Spirit is telling you something. Else. But a lot of times it will mean speak about royalty, about kingship. Uh, if you look at John chapter 19, uh, just before the crucifixion of Jesus, and when they flogged him, they did everything. But we say the soldiers, they twisted a, a crown of thorn and put it on his head. What else did they do? I said they clothed him in a purple robe. And they went on before him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Uh, this is a very common thing in those days. Uh, the royal families to wear purple. Purple is a very expensive uh, uh, color and fabric. The royal family, the kings, they wear purple, all right? And, and, and that's what it means. So when you see the color purple, it speaks about royalty, about kingship, okay? Just to give you a guide as you try to translate things. The other color to uh, pay attention to is the color amber. Uh, the color amber, that's yellowish, orange, orangish, you know, uh, kind of. And that, it speaks about the color of the glory of God. Uh, the glory of God is always represented in that color, the color, the color amber. A lot of references of Ezekiel's revelation, Isaiah's revelation, you will see the mention of that color. Uh, you see the glowing fire and the color of the glowing fire or uh, the glowing brass and the color of that representing uh, the glory of God. Uh, another color to pay attention to is the color blue. Uh, blue speaks about heavenly. It speaks about the Holy Spirit as well. Uh, blue speaks about the heavenly and speaks about the Holy Spirit uh, I swear there are many references to that. But sometimes the Holy Spirit will still represent it as a dove um, and on white, you know, and all of that. And that's, that's blue speaks about the heavenly. So you always see a combination of blue and white speaking about the heavenly. You know, that could come also from our understanding of the sky, just looking at the sky, blue, you know, and white. Uh, that could be something related to that. Amen? Now the color... Uh, crimson, scarlet, that's like red, all right? Um, it speaks about atonement, it speaks about forgiveness, it speaks about sacrifice. But also it can speak about bloodshed, about war, okay? 
but danger. So you need to understand what is happening in the scene um, to be able to have a clearer picture of what is being communicated. So the color red can speak about the atonement blood of Jesus, can speak about the blood of Jesus, the cleansing, the atonement that comes from that. But also it can speak about bloodshed, about war, about a disaster um, that is coming. So you need to see how it showed up in the same. And lastly, uh, the color I want to speak about here is the color white. White speaks about purity, speaks about light, but righteousness. And that's what uh, white is known for. You see in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, the Bible uh, was giving an account of what uh, John saw in the heavens. All right. He was in the throne room and so much was happening. And the Bible said, after he looked and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, no one could count them. That's millions upon millions from every nation, from every tribe, from every people, from every language. And they were standing before the throne and before the Lamb. What happened? They were clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. Hallelujah. So even as we're talking about colors, Remember, they are all connected to Scripture. That is why it's important for you to be a person of Scripture, to be a student of the Word, so that when you see something, a particular Scripture will come alive, will jump out, that this is what is being communicated here. This is the message that is being communicated here. So understand colors, and that will help you. That will help you as you interpret visions and dreams. Secondly, um, Understand how to interpret numbers in visions and dreams. Interpreting numbers in visions and dreams. So first of all, we looked at about colors. Now numbers. Look at numbers. All right. At the same way, look at numbers. You can look at objects. You know, but all these have references to scripture. Very crucial. You don't go extra biblical. No, no, no. We don't operate outside scripture. We stay within the boundaries of scripture. All right. Um, a simple number from 1 you know, to 13 has some significance. Uh, just numbers have meaning. They have meaning. So we're going to look at some of the meanings of the numbers. That will help you when you have visions or you have dreams, how to interpret them well. Now, a number like 7 speaks about completeness, all right? Uh, perfection, all right? Um, but also, multiples of it speaks about uh the same meaning, but in a greater proportion. So you see, number seven, number fourteen, number twenty-one speaks. You know, is the same perfection, but in multiples, in multiples. Hallelujah! Uh, it could be the doubling, the triple. Basically, the same meaning, only that the truth is intensified. There is intensity that is being communicated uh, with that number. Now, the third thing to know about numbers is the first use of number in Scripture is really important. Uh, the, the, the first mention is it's a biblical translation, um, biblical interpretation uh, principle. The first mention of something uh, carries a lot of weight. The same thing with number. The first mention of a number carries a lot of weight. So if a number has multiple meanings, um, if you see it shown in different places, the first mention is very important to pay close attention because it carries uh, significant significance. But through our scripture, there is consistency in the interpretation, you know, of numbers, the meaning of numbers from Genesis to Revelation. There is so much consistency that we can, you know, we can always say what seven is all about when you see seven. And that's why when you go to Revelation, and there is so many mention of seven, 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 uh, the seven seals, you know, the seven bows of punishment, the seven trumpet, you know, it speaks about the completion of the release of the wrath of God, the completion, the perfection of the punishment that God was releasing on mankind at the end of time. And before the throne room, you see the seven spirit, the seven lamb. You know that Jesus was walking around. You see, you see, you see this the seven scripture. This are uh, talking about the perfection. The perfection is consistent 
across scripture. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And, and the last thing I will tell you, don't over spiritualize it. There are a lot of people that are so much into numerology. You know, numbers, 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 no, no, no. Don't over spiritualize it. You know, take it at a very basic meaning and move on. Don't over spiritualize it. Amen. The key is for you to allow the Spirit of God to communicate the meaning of the vision and of the dream. Don't live your life by numbers. No, no, no. Don't live your life by numbers. Hallelujah. Don't over spiritualize it. But if God is showing you a number in a dream, in a vision, pay attention to it and try to understand the meaning of what God is trying to communicate. Now, the number one signifies God, speaks about the beginning, the source. Number one speaks about God, about the beginning, about the source of life. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So whenever we speak about one, we're talking about, you know, God, about the beginning, about the source of everything. Now the number two uh, speaks about witness, about testimony. There are so many Bible verses about, you know, whenever there is testimony of two, you know, uh, when there is a witness, you know, or uh, sending people in twos. Two speaks about witness, it speaks about testimony when you see the number. The number three is, uh, many of us will know about number three, it's about the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is the divine completeness, the divine completeness when you see the number three, okay? Uh, the number four speaks about earth, about creation, about seasons. And if you look at Genesis, that's when God you know, did a lot of all the things he created um, on the earth. Um, now, the number five uh, is, means uh, grace. It's a number for grace. Uh, it's a number for atonement. It's a number for the cross. Okay? Uh, and you see that in scriptures as well, the number five for grace. Number six is the number of man. Um, man was created on the sixth day. And it's also the number... Uh, when the Bible was speaking about the beast, and he said his number is the number of man, and he said it's 666, you know, and that number 6 is the number for man, and and when <clears throat> there is the repetition of it, it speaks about the intensity, and the 666 speaks about the beast, the Satan, um, and in that, in that direction. The number 7, we already said that, speaks about perfection, about completeness, um, but completeness. Number eight speaks about what? New beginning. So God made everything from, you know, day one to day six, rest of day seven. Day eight is seen as new beginning. Even when God gave instruction to his people, you know, he spoke to them about the seven years of farming and then there is a restart. There is a restart. There is the year of rest for the land to lay fallow. And then there is a new beginning. New beginning new life. There are many scriptures uh, to back that as well. The, the number nine speaks about finality, about fullness, fullness, finality. It is final. It is final. That's what nine speaks about. The number 10 speaks about law, about the commandment, about government. Okay. Uh, that's what the number 10 speaks about. But the number 11 um, is the number for lawlessness lawlessness disorganization okay um, so when you see the number 11 um, it's a number of lawlessness but the number 12 it speaks about the apostolic fullness about authority in governance in rulership okay um, and the number 13 speaks about rebellion about backsliding apostasy and there are many scriptures to to you know, to pack these things up. But the key to this is this. Don't over-spiritualize them. Don't over-spiritualize them. Let's take them at face value. If God is laying emphasis on a number in your dream, then try to figure out what that number means. That is something God is trying to tell you. Okay? And the same thing, God can lay emphasis on an object. Okay? Um, or, you know, um, 
an object or something you know about and all of that. I pay attention to that. In most cases, there are reference to them in scripture and that will help you to interpret them. Thirdly, thirdly, as you try to interpret them, we must do this. Keep the interpretation simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. So whenever God wants to speak to you, God will speak to you in terminologies you are aware of. He will speak to you in terms you will understand. He will speak to you in such a way. God is not trying to make it difficult for you to know. No, no, no. He will speak to you in such a way that it will make sense. It will make a lot of sense for you. To make a lot of sense. You see, even when Jesus was communicating, you know, here on earth with the disciples, he was speaking in a way that the disciples would understand. When he called Peter, what did he tell him? He said, follow me, Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, and I will make you fishers of men. This is a fisherman. He gets it. He gets it. That if I follow this person, I know what it means to be a fisher, a fisherman. But now I'm going to fish people. He, he can he can relate with it. So God will not start speaking to you about medical jargon when you have no clue in medicine. God will only speak to you in the way you will understand. He will use familiar terms. He will use what will make sense to you. Hallelujah. Now, secondly, most of the dreams, when you have dreams, uh, you need to interpret them on a personal level. Before you begin to interpret it on behalf of somebody else, let that dream speak to you first. Before it speaks to someone else or speak to the society, a lot of times when God speaks to us, he speaks to us in levels. He can communicate a message and that message is for you. And at the same time, that message is for your city or for some other people as well. But start with yourself. Start with yourself. God is trying to speak to you. Start with yourself. Hallelujah. And thirdly, don't take your dreams literally. You know, you had a dream, you saw um, your uncle doing something bad. Then literally he's the person that did that. No, 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 no. Don't take dreams literally. Don't take them literally. You need to seek interpretation. Whatever you dream, whatever you see, seek interpretation. Seek interpretation. Seek interpretation. Just a few days ago, um, you know, my my wife had a dream, and uh, you know, the face of person that was shown, uh, and prayed about it, but then the actual event was another person that was related to that same person. It was not something a shattered, something very minor. But it's key for you to know the face that you see might not necessarily be the person. But it's trying to communicate that it's a relationship. But God will use a face that can make sense to you to communicate something to you. So very, very important. Uh, don't take every dream at face value. Don't take it literally. Uh, seek interpretation. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you on it and fourthly whenever you dream the first thing you must do is to write it down immediately you wake up write it down record it audio message type it on your phone write it on your journal write it down the longer you wait without writing it the more you begin to forget the details immediately you get up write it down and somebody may be asking well what does it mean i don't I don't dream. It's okay. Ask God to speak to you in dream. You'll be surprised every day. So if you want to receive revelations in dreams, be expectant to receive. Just as you go to bed, you pray, God speak to me in dreams and in visions. I want to hear from you. I want to receive from you. Even as I sleep. And God can. I immediately you wake up, try to write it down. Try to write it down. Because the more you wait, the more you forget the details. Write it down immediately. Record it immediately so that you don't forget it. Now begin to ponder upon it.
hold on to dream on that revelation and ask the Holy Spirit, what is the meaning? What are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to show me? You know, as you begin to ponder upon it, the Holy Spirit will give you guidance. Will give you guidance. You know, ask the Holy Spirit, what's the central message? What's the central thought? What are you trying to communicate? What are you trying to communicate? And without going into all the specific details, simplify it to the common form. What is the general message? What are you speaking about to me? And one of the things I do, um, it's how you feel when you wake up is very crucial in that dream. So when you're dreaming and in a dream there is so much fear and anxiety, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. All right? Uh, but if you're dreaming and there is excitement, there is celebration, that's something good. That's something good. Uh, but with that mood, come in and ask the Holy Spirit, what is the meaning? I just love the story of Joseph. Every time somebody comes to him, uh, even when he was in prison, asking for the meaning of a dream, he will seek the face of God. He will ask God. The same thing with uh, Daniel. They will do what? They will ask God. Even though they've been so good in interpreting dreams and visions, they will always go back to do what? To ask God. So just make a prayer. Holy Spirit, what are you trying to communicate to me? I'm willing to hear from you and to receive from you. Give me the interpretation of this dream, of these revelations, and quiet down, quiet down, allow him to speak. And God can bring a scripture to mind. God can uh, begin to give you more clearer instruction based on that dream. God can begin to tell you, okay, this means this, that means that. Or we just give you the general overview of what he's trying to communicate. Always go and ask God. Hallelujah. And when God is speaking to you, you know, God will speak to you through his word. And sometimes, let's say you pray, you wait till you didn't hear anything. Take your Bible and read your Bible. Such a word. God will lead you. Maybe the Bible passage you prepare for that day is what God is communicating from dream. And as you begin to read that Bible passage, God will begin to explain some other aspect of what he's trying to tell you. Search the word, read the word, read the word. Like what I said, what did you sense in that dream? Was it good or was it ever present? What was the primary emotion? Relate whatever you felt to your current circumstance. What's happening around you? What's happening in your life, in the life of people around you? And what could it be that God is trying to communicate? So pay attention to those things. All right? Um, Sisley, you know, um, know this, consecutive dreams have similar meanings. A lot of them, God will show you something and he will show you it again. When that happens, you know that God is going to do it. It's about to happen. When God begins to show you exactly the same thing and repeat the same thing again, you know that it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And it's crucial for you to take action. God is telling you, this is going to happen and you need to do what? Take action. Take responsibility. Every time God reviews something, is for you to do something. God reviews to redeem. God reveals to redeem. No, Pharaoh had this dream back to back. And when Joseph came to interpret it, Joseph said, this will surely happen by the repetition of this dream. It will surely happen. But then what do we do? We need to do this. We need to do this. We need to do this. And this is how to prepare guys. And that's why God revealed it. So we can prepare. We can prepare for it. Hallelujah. Now, also, you look at what are the colors you see there and all of that. Like what we mentioned before, all the numbers and all of that. Uh, try to understand the meaning of those dreams. But don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. God is the one who is speaking to you. Okay? Now, note this. Some dreams, even after you pray, you will not get interpretation. And that's okay. In my life, I've had that experience. There are some dreams. I'll get the interpretation. I'll come to understand the vision, the dream letter. 
you know, I had a dream of something, I had a vision of something, and I tried to seek the meaning, I couldn't get it, oh, and that's okay. And then one week down the line, or even the same day, later on in the day, you know, a couple of weeks later, something begins to happen, and God said, okay, see that vision I showed you, or that dream I showed you two weeks ago, is happening right now. And this is what is taking place right now. So even when you don't see, get the meaning, that's okay, don't panic. Still write down, write down exactly what you got and keep it at that. In the future, as God begins to bring interpretation, then you can understand it even better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the key to proper interpretation of dreams is to ask questions. Ask God questions. Don't be afraid to ask God. Ask questions. Pray. And wait for him to answer. And wait for him to do what? Answer. Now, there is one thing you must do in every dream, in every vision. You must pray. You must pray. So if you have a dream, you can interpret it, pray about it. If you felt negative, pray to cancel it. If it's something that was evil, cancel it. Hallelujah. So God reveals to redeem. Don't panic and be bust in that, oh no, what am I going to do? This is going to happen. No, 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 no. You have authority. Take action. Pray and cancel it. Bring it to futility. God has revealed it to you for a reason. And you have authority to set the tone. Of what will happen. Pray against it. Don't be overcome by fear. But rather do what? Take action. There is a reason God revealed it to you. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 2. Uh, the Bible says it is the glory of God to conceal things. But the glory of kings to search things out. Hallelujah. So God will package a message in a dream. And download it to you. It is now for you to do what to search at the meaning. Many people just have dreams and just brush it aside. No, 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 no. That is the reason God gave you those dreams. Search the meaning. Don't look for anybody to tell you the meaning. That's not important. Just pray you have the Holy Spirit. Talk to God. If it's something you really need help, you can call your pastor. You can contact me, you can contact Pastor Helen or any of the elders. They can help you to understand the dream. But don't go looking for dream interpreters. No, 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 no. You don't build your life on that. As a believer, whatever happens around you is ordained by God. Hallelujah. God is on your side. Heaven is fighting for you. You should walk with your head lifted up. You have the Holy Spirit on your inside. Who is the best teacher? Always go to Him. Be in communion. Be in constant communication. The more you commune with the Holy Spirit, the sharper you become in hearing God clearly, in seeing visions, in interpreting dreams. You get better and better. Hallelujah. And that is the God we serve. And that is what God can do. So don't be afraid of dreams. Don't be afraid of dreams. Now someone may ask, how do I know if this dream is just because of the pizza I ate last night? Or is God speaking to me? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you, you dream dreams because of, you know, what has been happening in your life. If you've been thinking about somebody and you dream about a person, that just a continuity of what was happening in your life. Hallelujah. Or if you um, just worried about something and you continue worrying about it in your dream. There's just a continuity. Perhaps God is not speaking. I always believe when God speaks, it has to be something that just comes from Him. Something that you were not concerned about. Something that was not overwhelming to you. Something that you didn't even think about. God just brought it. Yes. But just brought it. And you pay attention. You pay attention to it. And God will continue to help us. And whenever you lean on the Holy Spirit, as Holy Spirit, what is the name of this? He can tell you. 
He can hide you, help you, and He can guide you. And that leads us to this last point. Don't build your life on dreams and visions, but on the fear of God. Don't build your life on dreams and visions, but on the fear of God. There are people walking around every time they say, I saw a vision, I dream dreams, this is my dream, this my... everything they do is about a dream, about a vision. No, 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 no. As a believer, don't build your life on that. Build your life on the fear of God. Build your life on the fear of God. Not on visions, not on dreams. Not on any supernatural encounter. Not even a supernatural lifestyle. Build it on the fear of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 7. The Bible said, For in many dreams and in many words, there is what? Emptiness. Rather, fear God. Rather do what? Fear God. When everything about you is about dreams and visions and dreams about visions, you begin to become very shallow in your walk with God. It is crucial for you to have the fear of God. That you be a person that is grounded on the word of God and on the love of God. That you're not defined by visions, your capacity to see visions and dreams. You're defined by who the word of God says you are. You are a child of God. You are holy. You are chosen. You've been called and set apart. You are a generation changer. You are the light upon a hill that cannot be hidden. Your identity is anchored on what the word of God says or who God says who you are and your fear of God. And that's what we believe. And that's what we're talking about. So as we wrap up this message, it is important for you to be expectant to hear God when you are awake and when you're sleeping. And take steps to understand what God is communicating to you. And then pray about what you have seen. Don't just leave it. Don't just leave it to circumstances, to chances. No, no, no. Take action. Pray about it. Cancel any negative thing. Prophesy positive things into reality. Allow God to use you to be a change agent. Take action based on the revelation God has given you. And God will continue to sustain you. Will continue to carry you forward. The Bible said in this Job chapter 33, verses 14 to 16, it said, For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. May that not be your story. May you always perceive, may you always hear, may you always see when God is communicating. And I would say, in dreams and the vision of the night, when deep sleep fall upon men, why slumber in the bed? What happened? Then he opens the ears of men and seal their instruction. If they can't hear me when they are awake, I'm going to put it in their mind when they are sleeping. So my prayer is for you, that as a person who lives a supernatural lifestyle, that you're ready to hear God, in the day and at night. And you can make good interpretation by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And you're able to be used by God to bring transformation to your generation and to the glory of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Thank you for helping us through this series. And God of heaven, I pray, may you increase our spiritual sensitivity. Oh God, help us, Father, to hear you clearly, to see you, a oh Lord, and help us, Father, to interpret you well. And God of heaven, we pray, may you renew our mind, for oh God, that we will know who we are. Oh God, may you help us to experience encounters with you on a regular basis. And above all things, may our lives bring glory to your name. Thank you, our Father. We we'll give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you.